uh, I would say that it takes a hundred million dollars to run a campaign for president. So we're not going to find anybody running for president who isn't part of the power elite or deeply in hock to the power elite. All through the campaign, people were complaining, why doesn't the caucus bring up? Why doesn't he make an issue out of Bush's links to the CIA and the death squads and the cocaine business and so on? And the only answer I can imagine to that question, well, there are two possible answers. A, the caucus is an idiot. And since he taught law at Harvard for seven years, I doubt very much that he's an idiot. And the only other answer is that he and Bush drew up some ground rules in advance, uh, which were uh, the caucus agreed he wouldn't talk about certain aspects of Bush's career and Bush wouldn't talk about certain aspects of the caucus's career. I can't imagine which I, what that is that Bush didn't talk about, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if it links back to the CIA. Yes? In light of that, that question, uh, would you comment on uh, the fact that George Bush was a member of the secret society Skull and Bones during his uh, senior year at Yale? Yeah, Skull and Bones is very mysterious. Their crest has 23 on it backwards. Uh, it says 32. Uh, some claim that's because it was founded in 1832, but I think they did it to give me a backwards 23 and confuse me. <laughs> Uh, William Buckley is a member of Skull and Bones, too, which makes for an interesting, strange loop because Skull and Bones seems to have a lot of Masonic traditions, and yet Buckley is a member of the Knights of Malta. Um, Timothy Leary made one of the most intelligent comments on Illuminatus I ever heard. He said, uh, basically, uh, what you show is that there are 24 conspiracies on whatever level you look. And Tim said, I discovered that when I was in Folsom. I realized that in Folsom there were 24 different gangs fighting over the turf. Who was going to control the prison yard? And then I realized it was the same 24 gangs I saw fighting over who was going to run Harvard, except the ones in Harvard spoke better English. And years later, many years later, I met the former district attorney of Santa Barbara, who had also read Illuminatus. The damnedest people read my books. And he said to me, you know, every town in the country has at least as many conspiracies as there are in Illuminatus. Um, no, I forget his name. He was a former DA of Santa Barbara. I met him at Esalen. And he said, every town has at least 24 conspiracies fighting over who's going to run the town. And I, I think that's uh, probably very true. Every town I know anything about is like that. By uh, the way, the art world is run that way. Uh, everybody conspires to, to promote their own gang. The National Lampoon did a parody once of the New York Review of Books. It was called the New York Review of Us. And it was Norman Mailer reviewing, reviewing Susan Sontag and Susan Sontag reviewing Norman Mailer and Gore Vidal reviewing uh, Noam Chomsky and Noam Chomsky reviewing Gore Vidal and so on and so on. And uh, California, West Coast writers, we've had to start our own conspiracy to promote one another because the New York gang doesn't want to let us in. They want to control the turf. And the marijuana world runs that way. Everybody is fighting over who's going to take over the marijuana business. In Los Angeles, you've got about eight different gangs fighting over who's going to run the crack business in South Central LA. Uh, no matter where you look, you always find uh, people work through affinity groups, and affinity groups tend to hide things from one another. By and large, we tend to think, my gang is just an affinity group. The other gang over there is a goddamn dirty conspiracy. I don't believe in any monolithic conspiracy theory because it violates the basic principles of primate psychology. There is nothing that domesticated primates like better than the double cross. Every conspiracy falls apart because the members of it are betraying one another. There's considerable evidence that's how P2 fell apart. And conspiracies, I think, have a natural lifespan, just like people. Corporations have a natural lifespan. There's no corporation in the world that's, uh, that existed at the time of the first Queen Elizabeth, except the Dutch East India Company. Most corporations die in a hundred years or so. Conspiracies seldom last more than a few years. 
the one big overriding conspiracy is a construct of minds that are very good at twisting facts to fit their own preconceptions.